I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Sabbath to all of you again, our friends all over the world. We're happy to be with you again in order to share God's love. May God bless you all as we join together in studying God's love and accepting his most valuable gift of all, eternal life with him, our creator. Thank you again for joining us in our morning worship for the Lord again this beautiful Sabbath morning. Our foundation text this morning is found in Isaiah 66, 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, from one Sabbath to another, shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord of set the Lord. May God continue to bless you all. Good morning and happy Sabbath to all of you. Uh, we're happy that uh, we can be back here. We, we're happy that there's always this Sabbath. We're always, as I've mentioned to you, even in our previous uh, meetings, that I'm always, when Sunday comes, I'm always looking forward to the Sabbath because that is how we can be together. And I love being with you, uh, our friends there, even if uh, we do not see you, but I know that you're there because uh, of this uh, internet. And one day, hoping that one day we will see each other and we will meet each other. I'm looking forward to going to heaven because uh, if I do not see you here on earth, we, I will, I would like to meet you out there in heaven. That's why stay put, stay in the same faith. According to the Bible, it says that only he who stays, uh, the, those who will be saved are those who have the patience of the saint. So you have the patience of the saint, no matter what happens, uh, epidemic, COVID-19 or COVID whatever, uh, variant here, just stay put. As long as God keeps you alive, you're okay. And he allow, allows you to go, make sure that uh, uh, you are in his hands so that uh, when he comes, he, he will still raise you up and, and we can still meet. But don't give up. See, if you give up, uh, then uh, you allow the enemy, you allow the devil to steal your dream away from you. And I know that your dream is everlasting life. Thank you so much. And before we start, I would like to uh, invite you for a word of prayer. Dear God, thank you so much that we can be together again this beautiful Sabbath uh, morning. And thank you for this uh, day because you have blessed it. And I pray that as we uh, com uh, commune together in your name, I pray that you will bless all of us. Bless also the message that I'm going to present to our, uh, to our friends all over the world. I pray that you will bless it, that it will have an effect on them. At least the effect will be uh, for them to come to the foot of the cross to you and join your camp so that uh, you'll be able to include them among those people whom you are preparing to save when you come. Forgive us from where we have fallen short of your glory. I ask all this favor in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Before we start, we'd like to uh, offer a song of praise for the Lord. So uh, we'll see, we'll prepare this uh, opening song for us. This indestructible 125 Canadian uh, dollar anyway. drone is now available in Canada. We'll skip this place over there. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay. We will start.
Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that uh, beautiful song. Uh, another Sabbath has begun and another day has come where we can worship God, our Savior. Now you will notice, uh, you will notice that our background here, the background that we used is something to do with, uh, it says there that uh, why Jesus Christ will not attend uh, your church on Sunday. Now, as I also mentioned last Saturday, I'm not trying to put anybody down. I don't want to discriminate anybody and we all have uh, the right. Uh, we are still, we have the freedom and the right to worship God according to the dictates of our conscience. Uh, but uh, uh, this is in my, according to my conscience, in my belief uh, that uh, this is, uh, this should be the day that I should worship, Saturday, Sabbath, not uh, Sunday, uh, because I am basing it on the authority of God. Uh, let me show you, let me remind you again of the uh, authority of God. Uh, let me remind you, according to the, okay. Here, what is God's mark or symbol of authority? I gave them my Sabbath to be a sign between me and them that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. So for those who keep the Sabbath, they acknowledge and they recognize that it is God who sanctified them. And it is said it is a sign between me and my children uh, of Israel forever, forever. Uh, even sign the children of Israel are the old children of Israel. And uh, of course, we are now considered uh, the children of Israel, but also called the children of God in the Bible. It continues on. For in six days, the Lord made heaven and earth. So God gave us the Sabbath as a glorious sign of power to create and a power to sanctify, convert and save us in the Bible. Uh, to show that we acknowledge him for having the power to uh, make us uh, righteous and power to save us when he comes. In the Bible, the words, it's a seal, sign or mark of his authority, God's sign. So if you're keeping the Saturday Sabbath, you're bearing a sign that you are God's child and uh, it, is, uh, it, said it is written in your forehead and it is also signified in your work, see? And uh, it confirms by saying that when we enter him, uh, we receive his salvation. We should keep the seven day Sabbath, keeping signifies that the person has surrendered life to Jesus Christ. And we surrender our life because if we do not keep it, uh, we do not recognize his authority, we surrender our life to somebody who gave an authority to let us worship according to uh, what we are obeying. Now, as I mentioned, we are all entitled to uh, our beliefs because, but uh, see, even I would like to show you a writing of Moody uh, Institute. The Sabbath was binding in Eden and it has been in force if ever since. This fourth commandment begins with the word remember, showing that the Sabbath already existed when God wrote the law in the tables of stone. Remember, God wrote the law in the table of stone way before there were no Israelites yet, there were no Jews yet. But God reminded them when there were these children of God, children of Israel, he reminded them to remember the Sabbath as a covenant with them always. So I am not trying to insult anybody who does not go to church on Saturday or I'm not insulting anybody. I don't mean to insult anybody when I placed in our background that God, uh, that uh, Jesus Christ himself will not enter uh, your church on a Sunday. And the reason for that uh, is because uh, the Sunday worship is not according to the authority of God. It is according to the authority of your church, of your churches. And if you have missed my sermon last Saturday, you should go back to it. 
It says uh, the title was how to keep the Sabbath holy. And you will find that the leaders of your own churches, the leaders of your own religion, if you belong to a religion, the leaders of the churches of all the Sunday keepers, they acknowledge, you can ask them, they acknowledge, they recognize, and they know, they are well aware that the Saturday is the uh, holy Sabbath that God has instructed people to uh, convene together to worship. It is the holy day, it's not Sunday. But they said the reason why we, we uh, worship Sunday and we let our people worship on a Sunday is because it is the authority of our church. So you are obeying the authority of your church. And I've decided to obey not the authority of whatever church, but I'm decide, I've decided to obey the authority of God. So we're going to go now to our topic. Now, the question that we have here, the big question that we have here is that, uh, are, we, are we really sure that if, if Saturday Sabbath is really from the authority of God, are we really sure that it is the original Bible Sabbath and that it has not been lost? How sure are we? So we're going to study that. So why Jesus Christ will not enter your church on Sunday? Is that going to be right? Uh, if Sunday, well, if Saturday was not right, maybe Sunday is okay if that was the real Sabbath. But only the Bible can tell us and correct whatever mistake we might have because God is perfect. He never makes a mistake. So let's go on with our study now. Has the original Sabbath uh, been lost? And first of all, I'd like to read this Luke 4.16. It was the custom of Jesus Christ himself <coughs> that he went to the synagogue. He went to church on every Sabbath. To, and he stood up even to read and participate in the program there. So when the claims of the Sabbath, uh, of the Bible Sabbath are presented nowadays, one of the commonest objections is that, but who knows which day is the Sabbath? The original Sabbath has been lost. In support of this claim, it is as argued that thousands of years have passed since early Bible times and amid all the migrations, wars, revolutions, and changes of customs and calendar, the original order of the days of the week has become hopelessly jumbled up. So it would have been possible that they could have been jumbled up and we might be copy, keep, uh, we might be keeping, I might be believing and worshiping the wrong day. So the claim is uh, repeated. Nobody knows which day is the Sabbath. So they, they might be right. These people are asking the question. It might be Wednesday for all we know. So we have to find out exactly if we are doing it correctly. What force is there in these objections uh, objection. Has the original Sabbath really become uh, irretrievably lost? Has civilized man as a whole become confused about the true order of the days of the week? Uh, have child changes in the calendar caused the Sabbath of creation to disappear in the midst of antiquity? The answer is resounding no. No. Indeed, no legacy from antiquity is, let's continue on. So uh, here, uh, the, the, the Bible, which we, we're gonna use the Bible, the calendar as a reference uh, here and here. There are three significant, so we're using these three as a basis of uh, the argument here in our study, the Bible, calendar, and the uh, science, okay? The three significant uh, checkpoints at which we can establish infallibility, the original order of the days of the week and the true position of the seventh day. So let's study now. Uh, checkpoint number one, the giving of the manna. In Exodus 16, 4 to 35, we are able to read about the story of God's children. Uh, when 
he uh, feeds the people with manna because remember they were sojourning, they were uh, walking from uh, uh, Egypt towards Canaan, the promised land. And they have no time to look for vocation, to look for work. They only depended on God. So God was feeding them with food. God was taking care of them. God was uh, uh, placed a cloud to go above them so that the uh, heat of the sun will not hurt them, will not uh, be unco make them uncomfortable. So we'll uh, feel uh, cooler with the uh, clouds. And every day they receive manna. A food from heaven was coming and they're able to eat those manna. And that was their food. Uh, behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you and the people shall go out and gather a certain uh, rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or so. So God take care of his people if they walk in his law. And the children of Israel did not uh, did uh, eat manna 40 years until they came to a land inhabited. They did eat manna until they came unto the burdens of the land of Canaan. From creation, when God set apart the seventh day as the weekly Sabbath, the early patriarchs keep careful count of the days, months, and years. Yet, if men become confused or careless, God would not forget. And in, and in the days of Moses, he removed all grounds for uh, confusion or doubt by performing a dramatic public and long continued miracle. This was the consistent threefold pattern in which the manna was given over an incredible span of 40 years. First, a double portion of manna fell on every sixth day of the week. Second, on uh, no manna fell on the seventh day. Third, the second uh, portion of the manna left over for the sixth day. Second, uh, no manna for the sixth day. I mean, double portion. Second, no manna fell on the seventh day. Third, the second portion of manna left over from the sixth day kept fresh and uh, sweet during the Sabbath. It is a significant uh, it is significant that neither Moses nor the companions uh, were left to figure out for the, themselves which day was the Sabbath. God himself indicated infallibly and unmistakably the true seventh day by spectacular threefold miracle repeated over 2,000 times during a period of four decades, period of 40 years. Now, uh, here, the most uh, confirmed skeptic could hardly ask for a more convincing or final demonstration than that. Ah, remember when, Jesus, when the children of God were walking from Egypt to Canaan, as I mentioned, they have no way of looking for jobs or uh, to work because they're always moving and moving. So God would supply the manna from heaven. It, manna would drain. That's the food that they eat every day. And they only, they, God instructed them to only gather the portion that they will need for that day. I don't know how many times they eat that day. Yeah, like now we eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And dinner. So maybe, I don't know, uh, there was no mention how many times or what was the program of their eating, but they get the portion. And whatever, if some people who are greedy and they get more than what they should be eating that day, what happened to the uh, extra, to the extra food that they get? They get spoiled. They get uh, spoiled. They, they become useless. They cannot be eaten anymore. But every Friday, God would send them double portion and they were instructed to gather two portions because on the Sabbath, on the seventh day Sabbath, uh, God will not train manna to them and at least they have food to eat. And uh, the double portion that they received on a sixth day, which was supposed to be Friday, it never gets spoiled. 
As a matter of fact, it, uh, it tastes really sweet and good on a Saturday. So that just shows, and that was during the span of their, uh, of their journey from Egypt to uh, Canaan. So I mean to say, so nothing has been lost there because God will not make a mistake by sending a double portion on a Friday. So the Friday will not be mistaken. And, uh, and uh, the Saturday, Sabbath, will not be mistaken for because no manna fell every Saturday. So that is one, one, uh, one proof. So here is a, a name, age, and imagination of what the children of Israel were doing. They were picking up food that was rained by God uh, to, to them, the ground they, they pick up for them to eat. Checkpoint number two. The practice of Christ and his disciples. In Luke 4.16, it says that it is the custom <coughs> of Jesus to go to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he was in the church, in the synagogue every Sabbath. And he even participated to read in this uh, interval between the giving of the manna and the time of the Christ. The Jewish people used a series of remarkable calendars, kept careful records. Yet again, through the man might uh, lose track of the days, God did not become uh, confused. God will never get confused. Jesus' Sabbath keeping custom provides conclusively that he uh, knows uh, that, he, that the Jews he had not lost the true seventh day up to his time. For he kept the day then being observed by the Jews as the Sabbath. His disciples also honored the seventh day as then observed as the Sabbath according to the commandments. If the Jews had been at fault of the reckoning of the Sabbath, we may be sure that Jesus would have corrected them. See? So God did not lose track of counting the Sabbath, uh, of the seven-day Sabbath. So when Jesus Christ was born on earth to come and uh, manifest himself in the form of human being, he still went along with the normal practice of going to church on Sabbath. And if there was confusion, confusion uh, at the time, if the uh, days were changed during the early times before he came to this earth, he would have corrected it. Jesus Christ would have corrected it. Accordingly, at the second checkpoint, the true position of the seventh day was not left in fog of our sanctity. For a period of 30 years, it was unmistakably indicated again, not by a public weekly miracle like the giving of the manna, but by weekly practice of the Lord of the Sabbath himself. You'll find it Mark 2, 27 and 28. <coughs> so, Jesus Christ practiced it himself. He would have corrected it if there was something wrong with the counting of the days, if there was something lost or uh, there, if there was a change. So that's another proof. And Jesus Christ was here only about 2,000 years ago. So there's really, that was not too long. That's why even the Jews uh, still continued that practice of the Sabbath keeping because they knew about that, that early years, uh, it was instructed by God, even from the time of uh, Adam and Eve. Uh, three books in which the Sabbath hour, the Bible, uh, you can find the proof in the Bible, uh, and every Sabbath when there's worship, there's the hymn book. That's why even in songs, it is being uh, said. Uh, the song says, uh, another six days has uh, ended, and Sabbath has begun, and also the book of nature. It will, they will all confirm that there was no confusion in the Sabbath. Checkpoint number three, the modern observance of Easter. In the, in the 2,000 years interval between Christ's day and ours, it would have been impossible for the true seventh day to have been lost. That same very significant reason, for that same very, for that same reason, I'm sorry. The worldwide modern observance of Easter, which commemorates Christ's crucifixion on Good Friday, he rests in the tomb on Easter Saturday and his resurrection on Easter Sunday. The observance is a public, irrefutable witness to the fact that the true seventh day 
has not been lost at any time during the Christian age. So that's a proof. Three further evidence of uh, the, the celebration of Easter, even by those who do not believe in going to church or convening uh, in church on a Saturday, Sabbath, according to the instruction of God, even those who do not believe it, they know that the Saturday, Sabbath has not been confused with any other day because they continue to celebrate also this Easter uh, celebration. And uh, like there's the Good Friday, which does not fall in any other day except the Friday. And there's the uh, Easter Saturday and Easter Sunday, according to their beliefs. Three remarkable uh, harmonious calendars have been in uh, operation side by side for the most of the Christian era. These are the Jewish, the Christian, and the Mohammedan calendars. Though they differ in some respects, they all agree with the order of the days of the week. Saturday for them all corresponds with this seventh day. And as I've mentioned, even all the leaders of all the different religions agree to that, that Saturday is the true Sabbath of God. Uh, no calendar change has altered the normal free running order of the days of the week. For example, the sole change of the calendar in the Christian era from the old style, the Julian calendar, and the new style, Gregorian calendar, they are adapted at, in parts of Europe in 1582 and in England in 1752, made a long needed adjustment by dropping several calendar dates from one month. However, the adjustment affected the dates of the month, but not the dates, the dates of the week. Uh, one month was shortened, but there was no interference whatsoever with either the order of the names of the days of the week. Finally, to remove the last lingering shadow of doubt, the science of astronomy adds its authoritative verdict. If a modern astronomer were to be confront, confined for six months in an underground cavern without clocks or calendar or instrument of any kind so that he lost all count of the days, a few hours back in the observatory, uh, would enable him to tell precisely what day of the week it was. Drawing on his past knowledge of the heavens, uh, though without any reference to uh, printed calendars, he would relocate himself in time solely by checking the position of the movements of the heaven, the bodies. So the, the scientists can even verify it depending on the position of the heavenly bodies as to when the Saturday Sabbath was or is. One person uh, living in isolation without a calendar, whether Jew, Muslim, or Christian, might conceivably lose track of the day uh, of, or several days and thus become confused about which day of the week it was. He might be uh, in the sticks in the mountains. He might get confused. However, immediately, he renewed contact with the relative and friends. They would quickly point out his error and put him right. Individuals, communities, and nations keep an automatic check on its order in this matter of time determination so that the losing of the seventh day or any other day of the week on the uh, universal basis is a sheer impossibility. So somebody might be uh, lost in the woods or in the mountains, so he does not know anymore uh, what day it is or when is the Sabbath. But then as long as he's saved from that uh, condition, as, long, as soon as he is able to contact his relatives who might be living in the city proper or in a bigger community uh, setting, he asked them what day of the week is it, and so on. He would be able to verify right away, and they can correct him uh, right away. Uh, see? So Easter Sunday. And uh, the day before 
And uh, let me just uh, explain to you, uh, for example, the, uh, the, the measure of time. The measure, for example, the measure of time regarding one year. Who invented uh, this one year uh, to be composed, or who, who made the theory that one year is composed of 365 days? or 365 days or 66 days on in one year. Who, where did they base that? That was based on science. The scientists were the one who uh, made that measure of time because one rotation of the earth around the sun is one year, 365 days. Now, how about the moon? Who made that measure of time of one month, 30 or uh, 31 days or 29, who made that measure of time? It was also science. The scientists also, one rotation of the earth around its axis, that's where they base it on. And how about the measure of the day? Who uh, made that measure of the day to determine that one day is composed of about 24 hours? Who did that? Or it was the Scientists also, the science. Based on science, uh, one, one rotation of the earth around its axis is one day. But then when it comes to the week, where did this uh, measure of time about one week came from, come from? I have read that many scientists before tried to uh, not to follow God's time. They tried to make one week with 10 days and it did not work. They tried to make 20 days, it was too long, it didn't work. They tried to make it five days just to go against God. But it, nothing of them ever worked, none of them. So they decided, they got frustrated. Why don't we just go along with what the Bible says? The seventh day, the seven days cycle, make it one week. And when they adjusted to the uh, authority of God, what happened? Everything worked. Everything worked for many years now. It, co it co co uh, coincided with the uh, the days coincided with the week, and the week coincided with the months, and the months through the year. So we can deviate. We can try to disobey God, but in the end, God's authority still stands. So you have a decision to obey the authority of God, or to obey the authority of your church, or to obey the authority of anybody or your own authority. You have to make the decision yourself because God will determine uh, uh, on those decisions of yours, he will determine what he is going to do with you. Okay? And he already, I've already mentioned that several times that uh, for disobedience, God uh, will just take the people to the lake of fire, uh, not because he hates them, but he, because he cannot do with them, he cannot let them obey him, and he, they will be uh, problems for uh, God if they take them to heaven. So here, the day before the Sabbath is called preparation day. That's Friday. That's uh, from the how to keep the, the original. Let me go to the original names of the days of the week. Before uh, the days were not named. When God established that one week period, He did not uh, give name to it. He just called them first day. Genesis one five first day. Genesis 1 8, second day. Genesis 1 13, third day. Genesis 1 19, fourth day. And uh, Genesis 1 31, sixth day. And then on the seventh day, Genesis 2 1 to 3. There were no names. And when they start putting the names on it, uh, if they were, they put these uh, Latin names first. Remember, uh, the, the Latin name was a general uh, language at that time. There was a time. I guess when they were the Greeks were in power. Uh, so this first day was called Gis Solis. Second day was called Gis Lone. Third day, Gis Marte. Fourth day, Gis uh, Mercury. Uh, fifth day, Gis Hovis. Sixth day, Gis Vernis. And then Gis uh, Saturday, Gis Saturn, Saturni. And then later on, from that Latin name, they transferred, they, they uh, changed the name to Saxon names. So they call it the first day, Sun's Day, Moon's Day, Tuesday for third day, fourth, Wooden's Day, 
five Thursday, six Frigas Day, seven Saturn's Day. And then when it was changed to English, uh, it became Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like uh, we have it now in our calendar. Additional note, the details of the change of calendar from the Julian to the Gregorian form. It's quite uh, long here, but anyway, I don't even have to read it, but you have it there, you can copy it there because uh, it's hard for me to read it with the lights uh, focused directly to my eyes and also the print a bit small, but you can enlarge it where you are. But it tells you the uh, note, the details of the change of the calendar from Julian to the Gregorian calendar. So you will know, you will be able to establish that there was no confusion at all. Way from the Garden of Eden up to our time now, the days were never interchanged into a different day. The Sabbath, the Saturday Sabbath is still Sabbath. That is why I say that because God is not going to uh, contradict himself. God is not going to violate a law that he made himself. That's why I said here, when I found this uh, in the uh, internet, why Jesus Christ will not attend your church on Sunday, I know that the internet was right. Whoever put it there, he's right. So it, not, it does not come from me because I'm not putting down or I'm not prejudiced with anybody, but the internet was right. If Jesus Christ were around, uh, he will go to the church on a Saturday. On Sunday, he will be doing his work, his normal routine of work, weekly work, because that is not a holiday for him. He never said that it was a holiday. And even the church leaders of different churches agree and acknowledge that it is not the authority of God. It is the authority of their church. So on what day did Jesus Christ customarily worship? As his custom was, he went to church every Saturday, every seven-day Sabbath. So that was the custom of Christ. You will find that in Luke 4.16. Jesus' custom was to worship every Sabbath. But which day of the week is the Sabbath? The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord their God. And there was no confusion in the counting of the days. And when the Sabbath was passed very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came into the sepulcher. Who were these? The women. Uh, the Sabbath is not the first day of the week, as many believe. Who made the Sabbath and when? God made the Sabbath right in the beginning. In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Genesis 1, Genesis 2, 2 to 3. Uh, what does God say about the Sabbath keeping? He said, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you should not do any work. You or anybody inside the boundary of your home. Your son, your daughter, your manservant, your maidservant, your cattle. Because before they have working animals. Even the animals, uh, you let them rest. Uh, nor a stranger. If there's somebody visiting you and he doesn't like to do some work, tell him to stop. Tell him to just to rest and relax. Uh, that is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and he rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. That in Exodus 28 to 11, in the middle of the Ten Commandments. So nobody can try to remove it because otherwise he will have to remove some of the commandments. So God placed in the middle. So because God knows that. Uh, Satan will target this uh, commandment. He put it in the middle, so even if Satan targets it, he cannot remove it. See, otherwise he will be more powerful than God, and God's not going to allow that. But haven't the Ten Commandments been changed? Jesus said, and it is easier for heaven and earth to pass than one title of his law to fail. It will be easier to change, to remove heaven and remove earth than for what he has said to be changed at all. That's why when God said it's going to take into the lake of fire all those that are disobedient, you better believe it because it's not going to change that. See? God says, my covenant will I not break. 
nor alter the thing that gone out of my lips. Whatever has gone out of the lips of God, uh, he will not alter it. Remember, that's why the commandment of God, people try to remove the commandment, the authority, the government try to remove them, but they cannot alter it and so on. They remove the whole commandment because they would like to, uh, probably to have a, a community with no more commandment, no more laws. They just want to impose their laws. But man has made thousands of laws and still the world is very unruly. While these 10 commandments, if only all the people will obey, there'll be no problem. Nobody will kill anybody. Nobody will steal from anybody. Nobody will rape anybody. Nobody will, uh, nobody will do anything bad. Nobody will gossip against another person. Nobody will lie. And everybody will worship on a Saturday. Nobody will be uh, kneeling down to idols uh, because they cannot do anything according to the Bible. And it's a worship to the devil according to the Bible. When you kneel down to all those different items that are made by man, and so nobody will swear. So the whole world will be at peace. But with the thousands and thousands of laws, it is not at peace. It's so problem because they want to disobey God. Did the apostles keep the Sabbath? Of course. The Bible says, and Paul, in his, as his manner was, it was also the manner of all the disciples of Jesus Christ. Uh, three Sabbaths, uh, uh, he went to church and reasoned with them out of the scriptures. Paul and his company went into the synagogue uh, every Sabbath. On the Sabbath, we went out of the city by Riverside where prayer was worn uh, to be made and we sat down, worshiped God. So it was also the custom of disciples. When Jesus left, disciples until they died. It was their custom. Nobody ever changed it. Peter did not change it. Uh, it's a lie when we say that the Peter changed it and say, no, we changed it. No. Did the Gentiles also worship on Sabbath? God commanded it. Blessed is the man that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it. Also the sons of the strangers that join themselves to the Lord, everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant, Ever them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer for mine house shall be called the house of prayer. So God, God really want people to gather every Sabbath uh, and so on. That's why uh, and the enemy, I believe, has something to do with this COVID-19 because uh, what God wants to gather is not a, a being done. And even the leaders are also uh, helping uh, disassemble uh, God's people by not being able to assemble together. <clears throat> but wasn't the Sabbath changed to the Sunday of Christ's death and resurrection? There's nothing in the Bible that says that it should change because of his death and resurrection. There is not the remotest hint that the Sabbath was changed in Christ's death or resurrection. The Bible teaches just the opposite. Please review it. God blessed the Sabbath. The Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. God even stayed in the tomb that Sabbath. He did not even uh, rise up. He didn't want any commotion. And he did not want uh, the women to come and visit, uh, to come and visit him on a Saturday, Saturday because he know that uh, they have to go to church themselves. But wasn't the Sabbath changed to Sunday at Christ's death and resurrection? The women who came to anoint Christ's dead body kept the Sabbath. Jesus died on the day before the Sabbath, Mark 15, 37, which is now called the Good Friday. The women prepared spices and ointments to anoint his body. Then they rested the Sabbath day according to the commandment. So the, the women were commandment keepers. Only when the Sabbath was passed did the women come again to try to uh, visit him, but he was gone on that uh, Easter Sunday. Some people say that the Sabbath will be kept in heaven, God's new earth, in God's new earth. Is this correct? Of, absolutely. Uh, it says it was read by my wife, Isaiah 63. For as the new heaven and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, said the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. So while the heaven that we have right now and the earth remain, this, this keeping of the seventh day, Saturday, Sabbath has to continue to be observed by the children of God. 
But it shall come to us that when Jesus comes and he will go to heaven and he will put us in a new earth, this earth will be changed to a new earth. The moon will be changed to a new moon. So from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh will continue to worship before me, said the Lord. So if you are preparing, if you are really sincere or serious about going to heaven and being given eternal life by God, you have to learn to uh, adjust yourself from uh, in obeying God now instead of obeying someone who might not make it to heaven and then you're going to make it, you're going to go with him there. Okay, remember I read to you uh, uh, in the last sermon that God uh, in, endorses uh, the people who does not obey him, he endorses them to the devil because that's, that's whom they believe. Go with him. So he said, the hell is not intended for us, for the people, it was intended for the devil and his angels. But those who do not listen to God, those who do not obey him, he will endorse them to them, go with your father, the devil, because he's the one that you believe and obey. You, you must love him so much because I tell you the truth, I tell you, but you don't want to believe it, go with him. Listen to my sermon last Saturday and, and you can see that. It was said in the Bible also. But isn't the Sunday the Lord's day? Call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, Isaiah 58, 13. For the Son of Man is the Lord even of the Sabbath day. The Bible speaks of the Lord's day, but he never referred to Sunday as the Lord's day. The Lord's day is that he referred to is the Sabbath. They say it, the Bible speaks of the Lord's day in Revelation 1, 10. So the Lord does not have a special day, but no verse of the scripture. You cannot find the scripture any verse that says that Sunday is the Lord's day. See? That's why when I preach in the Philippines and somewhere, I always, uh, I don't give a challenge because I don't really like betting or anything. But I told them that I will give them a gift. Even now, anybody who, who of you who are listening, I'm willing to give $1,000 for anybody who finds a text in the Bible saying that Jesus Christ, or that God changed the sanctity, holiness of the Saturday Sabbath into Sunday. $1,000. I will give that as a gift. Just give me the text, and if I verify in the Bible that you are right, I will send it to you. you I can send it to you through email or uh, money order, whatever you want. But wasn't the Sabbath changed to Sunday, Christ that there is no remotest sin. God blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. And he never changed his word. Whatever comes out of his mouth, it stays. The women who came to anoint Christ's body kept the Sabbath. Jesus died on the day before Sabbath, which is now called the uh, Friday, Good Friday. The women kept the commandment themselves. With day Sabbath, the seventh day, Saturday, who made the Sabbath and when? In the beginning, God made the Sabbath. Remember to keep the Sabbath holy, as he mentioned. Haven't the Ten Commandments been changed? The Ten Commandments of God will never be changed because that is the character of God. Until He comes, that will be the commandment. It's easier to change heaven. If you, any of you would like to change heaven and do that or change the earth, but God's word will never change. The apostle kept the uh, commandments. God commanded, blessed is he that keep the Sabbath. And the Sabbath was not changed at all. It was not changed uh, because of God, Christ's death and resurrection. It will be kept in the new earth and the children who will be born uh, will continue to keep the Sabbath. Um, it was not, uh, the Lord's day is always Sabbath, not Sunday. Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Christ, uh, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him uh, in baptism in his death. So I'm going to go, and uh, um, it is very dangerous to tamper with God's law. Don't ever try to do that, because if you do not give, get the uh, reward for you for doing that now, eventually you will get a reward anywhere, because God promised eternal death to those who tamper with his word. Every word of God, of God is pure, add not, according to Proverbs, according to Revelation 22, 18, 10, and 19, do not add, do not alter, do not change anything. If you remove something from God's word, 
or the thumb volume is low, uh, your name will be removed from the book of life. If you are chanting, all the curses in the Bible will be added to you. That's what it says. And then why did God make the Sabbath anyway? It's a sign of creation, sign of remembrance, sign that you are his child. Sin is disobeying God. The wages of sin is death. Whosoever shall keep the whole law and does not obey one is guilty of all. I mentioned that to you. Like the ten chains, if you break one, you break all. He's the author of eternal life. God feel. What does God feel about religious leaders who ignore the Sabbath? God is disappointed. He said, their priests have violated my law. They have profaned my holy things. They have put my different, no difference between holy and unholy. I am profane among them. Therefore, have I poured out my mind indignation upon them. God is pouring his designation, his indignation to those people who do not obey him. So God said, if you love me, you keep my commandment, John 14, 15. Uh, so then every one of, of us shall give account to himself. Therefore, to him that know it, to do good and do it at not, you already know, it was preached to you, you heard it. And then blessed is thee, so he is going to uh, he do it sin. Blessed are those that do his commandments, for they will have the right to the tree of, of life. They have the right to live eternally in God's city. Of course, I mentioned the manner of keeping of the Sabbath. I was I mentioned that last week, how to keep the Sabbath holy. My question to you, my friends, is are you willing to follow Jesus' command and example? Are you willing to accept Jesus? If you are willing to accept Jesus, you better pray, tell him that you would like to accept him. Jesus will guide you. Pray to Jesus. Tell him, I would like to be saved, dear God. I would like to go to heaven. I would like to, to be rewarded eternal life by you. Could you show me the way? And God will make a miracle. He will show you the way. He will even lead you to a church that keeps the Sabbath and will teach you and will enlist your name in the God's come. But you have to be interested and do not ignore it because if you ignore that invitation, it will not happen to you. So let us sing our closing song so that uh, we can end our program this morning. I hope you have been blessed with uh, the message you have heard this morning. So let's sing this as for our closing song. It starts again. This brilliant monocular telescope is taking the world by storm. Okay.
Thank you so much, our friends again, for that beautiful uh, music. Thank you. Welcome, welcome every Sabbath. Uh, shall we end the uh, program with a prayer, please? Please join me as we uh, join together in prayer. Father God, thank you so much uh, for giving us a good example, even the Bible from the beginning. You worked for six days, creating everything, this earth and everything. But on the seventh day, you have stopped your work and uh, you de declared it as a rest day, not because you were tired, but you would like them to rest so that their mind will not be on their work, but their mind will be focused on the holiness of the day because you made it holy, uh, focused and remembering you because if all the people of this world will, every Sabbath will have a break to just to contemplate about you they will not forget you and they will all uh, be uh, uh, encouraged to live a righteous life according to your command, according to your uh, teachings. So um, you also, you did three things on that seventh day. You rested and you blessed the day and you made it holy. And you made it holy and because you are a restorer, you allowed people to, the only thing that they could do is to restore people's lives. If they are in danger, if they are uh, sick, they can restore. That's why people who are in the medical profession, doctors and nurses, they can do this work, the work of compassion, because you did the same thing on the Sabbath. But it is not a work to uh, benefit yourself or to uh, it's for the benefit of those who might be need help and so on. But the normal work, which could be moved to the next day, or we could be postponed, which are not emergency work, they should be left for another day, not the Sabbath. And people who obey you, I uh, find out that there are many people who work seven days a week, and yet uh, they fall into many of them that I, I have noticed uh, become homeless, they become beggars, despite working seven days a week. But I haven't heard of any beggar or anybody who starved, who obeyed you, and work six days and rested on the seventh day, Saturday. There might be, but I haven't heard of any, and maybe they're lazy, they do not work when it's time to work. But if they spend the day, uh, Sunday to Friday looking for a job, they'll always find a job because you promised it and they keep the day holy. Dear Father, I pray that uh, we will be enlightened about this Sabbath. And I pray that all our friends out there who are listening, uh, will be uh, compelled or they will be encouraged to obey you and not disobey you. Because I'm sure that all our friends out there, they are all seeking eternal life because this life on earth is not really improving anymore. Uh, uh, you, the happiness is all, are all fleeting. You're happy now and a few, minutes, a few minutes or hours or a few days later on, you have problems again. So... We are looking forward to the heavenly kingdom of yours where we can be part of, where the happiness is consistent and continuous and it will last forever and we can enjoy life forever. Forgive us from where we have fallen short of your glory and continue leading us to that fountain of eternal life. Uh, we ask all this favor in Jesus' holy name, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us, our friends. I'd like you to know that we love you. And I'd like you to invite you to continue supporting us, continue helping us in our ministry. Pray for us. Pray for us that the enemy will not uh, disturb, uh, will not uh, interrupt, and will not do something to destroy this ministry because we would like to be used in uh, uh, spreading God's word and uh, be an instrument in saving many, many more people to God's heavenly kingdom. At the same time, uh, one way you can help us, I'm not asking for money, not even a single cent, but one way you can help us, go to my YouTube and search Noel Frias and please click subscribe and click also uh, the bell, notification bell. And that way it could also be uh, spread to more people. And also if you like the sermon that you hear, share them, share them to your friends and relatives, let them know what is going on. Let them know that God has a truthful teachings that cannot be altered 
And the only way to achieve eternal life is to cooperate with God. So that's all and nothing well. There's nothing else. Cooperate with God because the teachings of God, it is hard if you don't want to obey it. But once you decide to obey it, you know, it will come in and Jesus Christ will help you. So pray to God that you will be saved and he's going to do his work of saving you. Thank you so much again. And uh, we will be saying goodbye to each other. But if you'd like to see us again, you can attend this evening at 7 o'clock for our health seminar. Thank you and goodbye.